Jermaine and welcome back to another week of Inside Adelaide. On tonight's show, social change in the northern suburbs, a local icon gets taken away and we let you know some of the things that have been happening at the Fringe this week. But first tonight, for close to 75 years the Semaphore Foreshore has been home to one of Australia's oldest and largest carousels. But all that is about to change as the merry-go-round was put on the market this week. Residents of Port Adelaide Enfield learned last month that their beloved carousel may be lost to them forever. Oh, it's actually quite sad. We've been coming here for many years and uh, it'll be sad to see it go. After being in his family for generations, owner Brent Layson announced it was time for him to sell the famous and world-renowned carousel. The decision behind selling the carousel came shortly after Mr Layton was told that the two volunteers, Ernie and Kath Makepeace, were set to retire at Easter time. Mr and Mrs Makepeace have run and maintained the carousel for the past 23 years, however wish to retire because of Kath's recent health issues. She's been very sick, you know, and you've got to have two to know what they're doing to operate this carousel. That's why Mr Layton's selling, because he will not get anyone like us to, to work it. Mr Layton's initial asking price of $600,000 is yet to attract any local interest. Despite strong pleas from the local community, the Port Adelaide Enfield Council is unlikely to purchase this significant tourist attraction, claiming Mr Layton's asking price is too high. I think Council's view is, or my view, is that um, the asking price of 660000 is a very opportunistic price. Various councils within South Australia have expressed interest in purchasing the carousel, with the Adelaide City Council showing the strongest interest so far. Adelaide City Councillor Anne Moran maintains that Adelaide City Council is only there as a safety net to ensure the carousel remains a South Australian icon. Ideally, um, it should be kept down at Semaphore. It was originally at Henley Beach, I understand. But if um, they couldn't get their act together, then um, I thought we should swoop in and, um, and save it. If it goes to the city, it'll probably open up for some other people, but I think it's iconic here in Semaphore and it should stay here. This iconic merry-go-round has provided fun, entertainment and laughter for children for over 74 years. To see it leave Semaphore would be a great loss to the tourism industry. It's a part of Semaphore. It's a part of Semaphore, it's, it's iconic. It's history. I used to bring in my kids every Sunday having barbecue. And the kids have a lot of fun here. After my, grab, my children are growing up, I used to bring my grandchildren. Oh, it's been here for a long time. People look forward to it and the kids enjoy this sort of thing. It's, uh, it's fun for them and quite easy for the parents to uh, sit down and relax while their kids are having fun. The happiness the carousel has brought to many people will never be forgotten. Nor will Mr and Mrs Makepeace forget the families that have made their mark on them. Oh, just a smile on the kids' faces. Oh, they, the memories go on. Day after day, year after year, it's like when we get the nice little kids in, they say, thank you lady, thank you mister for the ride and that, you go home nice and happy. You've seen all these kids grow up here and now they're bringing their families and that here. But A lot of generations. It's, it's got to go on. Daniela Abracciavento, Inside Adelaide. The Voyage of the Bounty is one of the most notorious events in Australian maritime history. It turned the heads of Hollywood directors in the 80s and it's now turned the head of local Adelaide man who plans on carrying out the voyage again and he's looking for someone to join him. What does local man Neil Mansfield and former Governor of New South Wales William Bly have in common? A great sense of adventure, which is certainly evident as Mr Mansfield prepares to make the same journey the Governor made over 300 years ago. Um, I'd like to reproduce uh, the, uh, the small boat voyage that, uh, that Bly did, um, it, more in a modern context, I think. I mean, I'm not prepared, I don't think, too many of us would be prepared to eat one twenty-fourth of a pound of bread and, uh, and a gill of water. The tale of the voyage of the bounty tells of Vice Admiral William Bly's journey to Tahiti to obtain breadfruit seeds, which turned out to become one of the most notorious events in Australian maritime history. The voyage is more commonly known for the devised mutiny among the crew of the ship and the attempt to overthrow their leader due to mistreatment. Um, the mutineers took over the, uh, the ship 
HMS Bounty, and threw off the captain and 18 of his crew with him into the, into this boat, the, you know, the boat exactly like this. Mansfield has spent over 12 months at sea trialling the replica boat and is confident that his replica vessel will endure the harsh sea environment. I, I personally don't think it's dangerous. Um, although it scares me, but um, I don't think it's dangerous. I think you know, I have no intention of not surviving. Neil is currently looking for volunteers to embark on the bounty launch set for May 2012. Historian Susan Marston explains that conditions aboard a boat in the late 1700s was not a pleasant experience. So on the one hand, you, you needed to contrast their existence with the existence they might have had on shore, which is why a lot of people went to sea. Um, on the other hand, what you got was um, basically um, salt meat that had to be soaked for hours before the cook could cook it. It was, it was that inedible uh, every day in special tubs. And um, beer, a lot of beer, uh, a bit of cheese, uh, uh, what they called bread but was what actually ship's biscuit also had pretty tough on the teeth. They wouldn't have had much in the way of teeth, I don't think. They would have had to chew a lot of almost unchewable food. Susan also joins Neil when stating a person's strong will and determination must be considered when looking for suitable volunteers for the voyage. You know, even nowadays, you're on a sailing ship, you've got to respond very fast. You can't just muck around and, and argue and dispute. So there's that, that necessity for quite strict hierarchies and command is still there on a, on a boat. As you can imagine, this venture is not for the light-hearted. Uh, what I would be looking for in a volunteer would be somebody, A, who has the capacity to have a certain amount of time. Um, and the other thing is uh, you have to be well, interested in boats, quite obviously. Uh, largely interested in maritime history and probably interested in the subject itself. The um, sponsorship. You know, I, I do need um, a certain amount of sponsorship to get the boat to Tonga, for example. Uh, there's a certain amount of equipment that I'd need, sat phones and things like that are, uh, I think, sort of pretty essential. To apply to become a volunteer for the 60-day journey, you can contact Neil via email on nmansfield at iimetro.com.au. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back after the break. <laughs> 